हाई गाइज फॉलो मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम टू नेवर एवर मिस एनी ऑफ माई क्रेजी अपडेट्स Now this is the start engine stop button it obviously gets stop start too so i can get into display layout over here and i can go for two dial over here and there i get back to the two dial setup it's very slick it's extremely slick extremely fast extremely fluid on the bottom left we get an odometer on the bottom right we get the trip meters there's a tachometer on offer with a gear position indicator in the center and lot of telltale lights this car is loaded with telltale lights and it's telling me auto stop start is been turned off well that's the case right now now these are actually the button steering mounted controls the best ever i have seen in my life because again like you see Okay, went to menu. Well, this keeps changing according to what mode you are in, and that is so fluid. It is just mind-bogglingly fluid. I can get something known as full map as well, and there, I mean, this is so freaking crazy. It is just a mind-boggling instrument cluster. Now, if I get a call, these buttons will get lighted up over here. This is the voice assist button. This is to go into back menu over here in this screen, and this is for the cruise control function. And it also gets a heated steering wheel. Yeah, heated steering wheel. Cool would have been really nice though. Range Rover, very nicely written. Metallic accents over here. Again, touch sensitive controls. Every control in this car is like touch sensitive. Land Rover has made a traditional SUV. Obviously, it is not a body-on frame, but a traditional SUV with all the creature comforts in the world, with all the technology. It is just mind-boggling. Truly mind-boggling. Even the tire pressure monitoring system, when you turn on the vehicle, will tell you what is the tire pressure in the spare tire. So, a lot of attention to detail in almost all aspects of this vehicle. I know Mahindra cars also do that. Before someone reads the comment saying that, oh, Faisal, Mahindra cars also have this tire pressure monitoring. System, which will tell you the air in the spare tire but in this vehicle i don't have to search for it in mahindra you have to actually go but again there's a big price difference let's not get into that right now so over here you can see everything is so beautifully done the leather the stitching the comfort the luxury the sound experience the insulation i mean look at this beautiful frameless inside rear view mirror auto dimming obviously and over here obviously you get a light you don't get one you get three leds over here with a mirror and you can push this out like that and there are twin sun visors over here so no sun ever comes inside and bothers you handle over here usually cars don't get a handle over here and the same is the case over here as well three leds along with a mirror along with twin sun visors as well meanwhile you can see there are a lot of controls over here right now this is actually the control for the sun blind over here this is to open the sun roof this is for sos this actually opens and this is a sos thingy over here this is again for some tool stuff meanwhile Where are the lights? Well, the lights are over here. Touch sensitive lights, three of them over here. It's just so mind-boggling. How do I open the roof without pressing this button? Simple. It has something known as a gesture control. Okay, I just move my hand like that, and the sunroof blind will open. Meanwhile, it also has auto sun blind roll up. If you leave the car without closing the sun blind, it will automatically roll it up. I just pull my hand like that, and there the sun blind is closing. Gesture control for the sun blind is. My goodness, who thinks about all this? Anyways, if I leave the car with the sun blind open, it will automatically roll it up because it knows that the heat will come inside, and because of the greenhouse effect, the car will get warm. So it also knows that it's that freaking smart. That said, I obviously have to open the sunroof and show it to you. So over here, we press the sunroof button to open it, and obviously, you don't have to press the sun blind button individually. It automatically opens, and that is how much the sunroof opens. Meanwhile. This is exactly how airy it feels inside the cabin thanks to the massive panoramic roof of this vehicle. Yeah, it's making a little bit of a noise which needs to be serviced at the moment. So the A pillar is actually slim. There's a good view of what's around and let's quickly press this button. Mm -hmm. So basically, park assist not available off road height selected. Let's decline the height pressing this button. Now the car is decreasing its height as you can see and feel it as well. Oh my god, it gives me the jitters when the car is actually dropping its height. It is so freaking cool. Let's press the horn. It's so freaking awesome. The horn is also so good. Now this is actually the control for the headlights as well as the fog lights and indicators too. Meanwhile, these are the controls for the wipers front as well as the rear and the front wipers well. The amount of spray they push out is so crazy. I mean, it actually puts spray almost everywhere on the car and these wipers work really well. So is the spray completely cleaned in no time at all and of course the steering has paddles over here beautiful paddles they feel so good to operate everything feels so nice in this vehicle but the small gap which is usually there in land rover cars between here and here that is not there in this particular vehicle and once you close this one okay let's close this you can see how beautiful and seamless this whole thing looks meanwhile i have to show you the massive storage space below the front center armrest Okay the storage space isn't much but this also opens like that and this is actually a 
cooled glove box you have two speeds for the cooling and can you notice one thing no not my sunglasses but the light actually turns on and off now my sunglasses have absolutely frozen right now there's an hdmi port over here there's a 12 volt charging socket over here there's another 12 volt charging socket over here there are two usb ports over here why do land rover cars have a million charging ports i don't know to power like a mega factory or something look at the metallic accents over here everything feels so fluid and so nice and actually very well put together everything is so soft soft leather premium material definitely made to a high standard now most of you would think i would just drive off the car but let me tell you something i can just sit out and admire this vehicle day in and day out like i told you the air conditioning works brilliantly well but one small feature which i need to tell you about this car is how it's actually made so i have driven all generations of the range rover from first second third fourth including the original prototype and my goodness look at that anyway so i have driven all the generations i went to the uk to drive it on the 65th anniversary of land rover and that time i drove a prototype i actually saw the manufacturing of the range rover this generation of the range rover this happens to be the face layer can you believe it they use aircraft style revetting in the chassis to make this vehicle that's the level of technology they use and i need to show you the roof you can see the roof well i have to tip toe to show it to you because the car is so tall and right now the ride height has been decreased all the way let's quickly get over here my goodness it is such a tough task look at the roof look at the shark fin antenna I think it's time to get inside and start driving. In fact, even the rear view mirrors have this feature wherein they will heat and drop all sorts of ice and water in rainy conditions and snowy conditions to ensure that when you are driving this vehicle you have absolutely no problem in terms of visibility. So guys, I know you guys have been waiting for it. So, let's get driving. All right, we're all set to go, which means first and foremost turning off the air conditioning, getting into seats, turning off the massage or the cooling function as well getting into sport mode turning off traction control yeah before that turn response system off so i can get into dynamic mode over here start stop is also turned off no actually it was off already now it's off so all the modes are set lowering the car to the lowest position access height selected so that i get the best aerodynamics yeah completely lowered as well now i need to turn off traction control dsc off and we're all set to go left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor it revs till around 2500 rpm and off we go and <laughs> this car actually lifts its nose to get off the line that's how punchy it is definitely the engine could have had more punch but then this is the 3 liter v6 not the 4.4 liter v8 but here's an interesting fact okay this 3 liter v6 goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 8 seconds that's impressive for a car which weighs 2400 kg right well it produces 255 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque that's again quite impressive 8 seconds to 100 top speed of 209 km per hour meanwhile the 4.4 liter v8 adds 80 horsepower taking it to 335 horsepower and 140 newton meters of torque to 740 newton meters of torque so obviously performance would be better right not really drastically because 0 to 100 km per hour takes 7 and a half seconds so half second 0 to 100 km per hour timing shaved off meanwhile the top speed has increased by i think 8 9 km per hour to 217 km per hour you pay an additional 30 lakhs for that that's crazy isn't it meanwhile there are two petrol engines on offer there's a 3 liter v6 and a 5 liter supercharged v8 which my goodness produces 518 horsepower and 700 140 newton meters of torque that's insane yeah obviously it is because 0 to 100 km per hour takes just 5.5 seconds and 225 km per hour is the top speed now of course that vehicle will totally guzzle because this one is returning a mileage of around 5 to 7 km per liter depending on the driving style and the place you are driving meanwhile the petrol the 5 liter would return a mileage of 2 to 3 km per liter somehow i am not convinced with the fact that why does the car weigh so much i mean it doesn't feel all its way and jaguar land rover or rather land rover has used a very advanced aluminum monocoque chassis on this vehicle leading to a weight reduction but still it weighs quite a lot in fact the 4.4 liter model weighs an additional 200 kg yes it is a heavy vehicle but somehow it doesn't feel its weight at all the suspension is definitely on the softer side it is so freaking soft that the ride quality is just mind bogglingly awesome now of course it gets air suspension it gets a slew of technologies it can go anywhere you want to take it off road ability is just surreal on this vehicle because it just can go anywhere you want to take it that's how good it is and the best thing is that these technologies they work really well the systems are so advanced that they actually monitor the suspension 500 times a second to 
all terrain to give you the best ride and handling balance and then obviously there's all terrain progress control which by the way i've already explained to you in the f pace vlog as well as the range rover sport it's like the cruise control for off-road situations it works to 30 kilometers per hour altering a lot of parameters of the vehicle to ensure optimum traction at all given time in terms of driving feel there's just something else about the range rover it's not dynamic in any way possible but it just feels like you know you're the king of the road it wafts along the ride is so smooth it's so surreal it's so comfortable it absorbs almost everything in its ride trust me anything and everything it comes the range rover just walks over it in fact that day when i was driving there was a pothole on the road and i drove over the pothole the pothole got rectified such good is the ride quality of the range rover it is just phenomenal but then because of the softer suspension setup what isn't great is the handling there's a lot of body roll on offer and although the steering does weigh up well it kind of feels too sharp in the center head position so if i move it like that it just feels too sharp but it is kind of light at lower speed so actually maneuvering and parking this vehicle isn't difficult but yeah it is difficult because the size is just massive it is really very cumbersome to drive because of the massive dimensions like i already told you in the start of this vlog this car's dimensions are just too much it's just too much to handle but the good thing is even with 21 inch tires low profile 45s the ride quality i mean i can keep going on and on and on about the ride quality and dare i say it this is the best riding car i have ever driven the ride quality is just an entirely different level when you're driving out on the highway you actually feel you're gliding on air that is the level of ride quality in the range rover it is just phenomenal and off we go so the thing is the mid-range punch is phenomenal it actually lifts its nose and just darts ahead that's the kind of performance it has in the mid-range it just darts ahead with so much thrust yeah low end lag is there in this vehicle but the mid-range is really very strong very punchy and the top end it bogs down and redlines quickly at four and a half thousand rpm in fact usually it shifts gears around four thousand rpm itself this eight speed gearbox is also very smooth with shifts it's not the fastest around but it is very smooth the motor is also very refined you can barely feel it's a diesel actually you cannot feel it's a diesel at all that's the level of refinement on offer in this range over everything feels so smooth calm and perfected the ride the handling yeah the handling has a lot of role but still you just enjoy the role it becomes part of your life somehow the brakes also offer stupendous stopping power they are very sure footed slight minor nose dive under heavy braking but all these technologies they just work so well in the range rover okay rear differential i mean i can see stuff happening over there when i lift off from the power or when i get back into the throttle over there telling me exactly what's happening that's how much precision has been used in making this vehicle in fact automatic wipers automatic headlights navigation and whatnot there's so many features i mean it's endless it is totally endless and these modes which i was talking about earlier in the vlog in the start these alter a lot of parameters right from the engine to the suspension system and the steering wheel however it doesn't really alter the gearbox because you have a separate mode for the gearbox now i'm in sport mode i can use the paddles but no matter how much i use the paddles i mean it is not going to hold on to a gear it will just upshift as and when it sees it and and off we go so i'll tell you one thing i have driven each and every range rover model that's right including the prototype so the prototype was actually known as the villar so land rover went ahead and registered a separate company the villar company so that nobody would know that they're actually making a range rover actually the rover company did that in the 1970s and that's the reason why they bought the villar name back and i had gone to the uk for the celebration of land rover 65 years that is the time i drove all the cars in fact i drove the prototype without a body shell it only had the chassis and it felt so light and did corner well as well meanwhile the first and second generation models used a body on frame chassis the third and fourth generation used a monocoque chassis this generation model was launched in 2012 facelifted last year the first generation lasted for 25 years meanwhile the second generation was quickly updated and guess what who developed the third generation model the l322 you guessed it right bmw so initially the car shared all its electronics and engine with the e38 7 series and then later it was updated to the e39 5 series because bmw owned the rover group at that moment and then they sold land rover to ford but even after selling it they still continued working on the l322 model because the contract actually stipulated them to see through the full development of the vehicle and later obviously it got the electronics from jaguar as well as ford of course and now the electronics have completely changed in the latest generation model this feels so good the kind of road presence is just insane i mean you feel the king of the road 
but here is there where is the problem it is in terms of pricing so i'll tell you what this car is excessive in every possible way it's massive in dimensions it's massive in features it's massive in comfort it's massive in luxury it's massive in rear seat space it's massive in wheelbase in fact there are 10 variants on offer three for the short wheelbase and seven for the long wheelbase the long wheelbase model has a 200 mm increase in wheelbase as well as length and honestly i feel <laughs> the short wheelbase should not be called the short wheelbase it should be called as uh, yeah just the range rover because there's nothing short about this vehicle even in short wheelbase format it is just so freaking long anyways the most important thing about this car is the pricing like i told you everything is excessive even the pricing is very excessive on this vehicle okay it starts at 2.11 crores goes all the way till hold your breath guys hold your breath okay hold yourself tight 4.45 crores for the top of the line 5 liter supercharged autobiography sv autobiography my lord that is not a price that is the cost of houses buildings and what not and i don't understand why this car costs three times as much in india because in the us it costs one third the reason is of course the volumes are less a lot of taxes duties cbu and what not stuff but still a very expensive vehicle this particular model which i'm driving right now costs 2.45 crores that's again a lot of money for what happens to be a base trim of the range rover but then once you drive it once you live with it and once you understand what all this madness is about you know that this car is something which will keep you utmost comfortable on the road and out on the highway making an overtake yeah just get onto the throttle it will make an overtake you won't even realize you made an overtake you won't realize anything at all it is just so smooth so refined so perfected in every possible way and guess what it's unbeatable off-road it can go anywhere you want to take it and with the air suspension you can actually increase and decrease the ride height and the ground clearance and that goes all the way guess from how much to how much 220 to 310 mm and even the front and rear suspension have a lot of travel the front suspension has a travel of 200 mm off-road meanwhile the rear suspension has a travel of 250 mm off-road so everything is so excessive in this vehicle probably that's one of the reasons why the pricing too has to be excessive but if i buy a vehicle so costly there i'm going to take it off-road there i'm going to drive it in the city i'm just going to park it below my building or in my big fat house and probably sleep in it and that i think would be the best possible investment in the world meanwhile i just imagine how the five liter supercharge would be you know the range rover sport is the sportier version of the range rover all right but the first generation model of the range rover sport was not based on the range rover it was based on the discovery platform that's why when the second generation model came which was based on this aluminum architecture which is there in this particular range rover the weight drop was 400 kgs and the range rover sport is the sportier version of the range rover it drives more sporty it's more compact it has all the essence of the range rover but the range rover is a range rover if you don't like driving you still love driving this car because it's not about going fast or cornering hard it's not about corners you won't corner in this vehicle it's all about the feel it's all about relaxing you can see i'm so relaxed today i'm so composed my heartbeat levels uh i don't want to check it right now but i can tell you it must be around 70 80 beats per minute that's how smooth and refined everything is and if you guys like this video you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye meanwhile while driving i forgot why i have to have my chauffeur because remember she was there in the vlog vlog the problem is that this these screens are still very cumbersome for me to understand right now and every command you want to do is just so freaking confusing yeah there is all-wheel drive on offer so safety is there even with traction control off no wheel spin none of that sort and what's up annabelle butler one butler two end of the vlog it did take a long time for me to figure this out but these are actually the headphones of this vehicle okay so rear entertainment package has these headphones and as you can see it says range rover over here and they're twin units one is here the other is over here and actually they were lying somewhere inside the car so i could not find them but now i found them and i'm so excited to sit behind and listen to all the music and all the entertainment it can offer me range rover this is so freaking cool Anyways guys, I know I keep extending the vlog, I know I keep forgetting stuff, like I'll tell you what I forgot, I also forgot to tell you that the fuel tank capacity on this vehicle is a massive 85 litres, meanwhile the fuel tank capacity on the petrol is actually 105 litres, and yeah, I can keep going on and on and on and on, because there's so much to talk about, even the rear view camera, just look at it, okay? Now it has multiple modes, uh, obviously it switches cameras as well, and right now cooling has been turned on, what a beautiful car, I love it. Hot girl, are you there?